Yeah. Is it simple? I know, I don't have patience, that's my problem. Just need you, Brad. <laughs> we have an interesting topic today, and I'm so excited about it. And uh, ladies, let me tell you, thank you for your input this week. And uh, I found out through your input, wow, you are some amazing, insightful Christ followers. I mean that in the highest, highest compliment. I was so impressed with the details of the response, the thoughts, the struggles, the struggles that you've been through, and uh, I am just excited about the message today, that we can all kind of tag team and do this together, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. So grab your Bibles, and let's get started. I commit myself, I commit myself to, love, to love, to learn, to, learn, to, lead, to lead, and to live, and to, live. And to help as many people. As possible, as possible, become totally committed, become totally committed, to, committed to, Jesus to Jesus Christ. And I'm also an American. That's why I'm wearing my shirt. Do you like that? Because a couple of weeks ago we talked about that we are Christians before we're Americans. And I had people after the service go, is it still okay if we cheer for America in the Olympics? Seriously. <laughs> my shirt, my shoes even have America on. Okay, I'm American, I'm red, white, and blue, through and through, okay? But we're also going to be talking about this today. Before I'm a spouse, before I'm an employee, I'm a follower of Christ. Amen. Amen. And that's the authority in our life, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Father, we love you. Father, we look to you in every area of our life. So, Father, for the areas that are easy, we gladly give those up. Father, for the areas that are hard, we ask for your patience and your guidance. And, Father, that we know you will because you love. And you will ever continue to work in our life, molding us, making us, shaping us in your image. Father, we love you and praise you. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. times and we agreed that going to London was the right thing to do but in my heart this feels wrong don't go Jack you mean don't go at all what, what about my internship believe me I know I know what an incredible opportunity this is for you for us Kay right for us but I'm afraid that if you get on that plane look we're at the airport nobody ever thinks clearly at the airport so we should just trust the decision we already made. You've been accepted to one of the best law schools in the country. I've got this internship at Barclays Bank. We have a great plan, honey. You want to do something great, Jack? Let's flush the plan. Let's start our lives right now, today. I mean, I have no idea what this life is going to look like, but I know that it has the both of us in it. And I choose us. The plan doesn't make us great, Jack. What we have together, that's what makes us great. See, when you watch a movie like this, it's every woman's dream to have the house, to have the guy who loves you and cares for you, for him to come home from work, you walk to the door and your hair is flying in the wind, you meet and you kiss every day, and then you get married. And what can happen is that we can become disillusioned with marriage. 
not only that, we can become abused by marriage. And for a lot of us, when we hear this word, biblical submission, it turns everything inside of us. Let me read a few of the letters, and I can't read all of them, but let me just read a few of them very quickly here. It says, from a biblical uh, perspective, I think of submission as allowing God to show us what He has planned for us and not having to worry about every little detail ourselves. By submitting to God, it actually, provide, it, it actually can provide comfort in knowing that there is someone bigger than us, and He has our back, so to speak. I think we fear submit, submission because it means we are giving up control. But God has a way better plan for us already. So maybe trust is a better word to use. Or using the word submit to God and trust His plan. I'm not a fan of the word fear in general though, as it is the opposite of love. So maybe that this is the issue. If we know that we love God, then we should not fear His plan for us, but instead submit to it. Because with love, we have trust. Here's the next one. Beware. <laughs> what do you think of when you hear the word submission? Slavery. What do you think of, of, when you think of biblical submission? I think it's so confusing. Uh, why do we fear submission? The abuse of power. The wrong person gets a hold of this verse, and they think God backs them up with their supremacy behavior. If more people would wash one another's feet instead of demanding respect and submission, what a different level of love we would see. Here's another one. Why do you think of when you hear the word submission? The weakness. What do you think of biblical or what do you think biblical submission is? As a wife to her husband, it is one of the most beautiful expressions of love towards your husband. It is also allowing God to turn weakness into strength by allowing him to mold the changes. Why do we fear submission? As a wife, society has taught us that the submission is negative in marriage, uh, that you need to be strong and in control of your own life. I think we fear it because we fear the unbiblical effects society has showed us. Now, we are in our series, Keeping Our Head Above Water. And I'll tell you what, if any verse in this whole book <coughs> causes us to shudder, especially uh, for ladies, it's this verse right here. So if we're going to learn to keep our head above water, we really need to understand here what Peter is teaching us. Now, Brad pointed out the theme that Peter here is showing us. He's talking us to be subject or to be in submission to every human authority that God has ordained and God has placed in our life, mainly our government. Again, if our government is against the Bible, that's not what we're talking about. But it's to be in submission. The speed limit, paying our taxes, being in submission, not being rebels, but being in submission. The next one he pointed out, that servants being subjected to, to your masters. Again, we're not talking about pre-Civil War slavery here. The better relation would be that of an employee and employer today. Be in submission to your employer. Now when we come here to chapter 3, verse 1, you see the same flow. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, not to men, to your husbands. Well, ladies, I'm going to ask you to take your pen because there's a reason. Notice, so that, there's a reason. So that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of of their wives. Let me make it very clear. This next clip is not what we're talking about. What are you doing? See, so you left me no pizza. Caleb, I just lit that candle. I like the way it smells. Well, I don't. Did you leave me any dinner at all? I assumed you were eating with Michael. Does it not occur to you that there are two people living in this house and both of them need to eat? You know what, Caleb? If you would communicate with me, maybe I could have something for you. Why do you have to make everything so difficult? Oh, I'm making everything difficult? Seems to me like I'm the one carrying the weight around here while you're off doing your own thing. Excuse me? I'm the one out there working to pay this mortgage, and I pay for both of the cars. Yeah, and that's all you do. I pay all of our bills with my salary. Which you agreed to do. That's fair. Do you not like this house? 
Do you not like your car? Oh, Caleb, who takes care of this house? Yeah. Me. Who washes all the clothes? Me. Who gets all the groceries? Me. Not to mention I'm helping my parents every weekend. You know, I've got all this pressure on me, and the only thing you ever do for anybody is for yourself. Let me tell you something. You don't know the first thing about pressure. All right? You think I, I put out house fires for myself? Or, or rush to car wrecks at 2 a.m. for myself? Or pull a child's body out of a lake for myself? You have no idea what I go through. Oh, yeah, but what do you do around here other than watch TV and waste time on the internet? You know what? If looking at that trash is how you get fulfilled, that's fine, but I will not compete with it. Well, I sure don't get it from you. And you won't, because you care more about saving for your stupid boat and pleasing yourself than you ever did about me. Shut up! I'm sick of you! You disrespectful, ungrateful, selfish woman! I'm How dare you say that to me? You constantly nag me and you drain the life out of me. I'm tired of it. If you can't give me the respect I deserve, look at me. Then what's the point of this marriage? I want out. I just want out. If you want out, that's fine with me! That is a, has been used in households all over this country in the name of God. There was a group that started in the 80s and uh, the purpose of the group was to bring men together to address this issue. Women were crying out of the abuse that was taking place in the Christian community. The group was called Promise Keepers. And literally tens of thousands of men would join in um, stadiums all over this nation. And there were seven promises that they would hold to. And it was mainly to honor God, to honor their families, to honor their wives, and to join with other men. And they would repeat these promises, and they would commit to these promises. And the thing about it is, if you understand their mission, these were <clears throat> good, solid, biblical commitments. And to be married to such a man would be a great thing. In fact, to be a part of a church uh, that were filled with men like this would be an awesome thing. But the Bible is realistic. And the Bible tells us that there are going to be some Christian women that are going to be married to non-promise keepers. And so Peter here addresses the issue. And we're going to entitle the message today, Women of Valor. So let's take our Bibles and go to 1 Peter chapter 3. And notice here what he says. Again, keep the context in mind. These were exiles coming into a new land, new government, new area. And when the kingdom of God comes and people come to Christ, there are going to be times where one spouse receives Christ and the other doesn't. So Peter here addresses these women. What do they do? Do they divorce their husbands and go find a Christian man? Do they just accept his ways and not follow Christ? What do they do in these situations? Notice what Peter says. He says, likewise, staying in the main flow of the authority that God has set up. Government, boss, now here it is as a wife. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. Verse 2, when they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair, the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing that you wear. Now, our culture teaches us and puts a huge emphasis, ladies, on the way you dress, on the way you look. And Peter here is not saying that that's a bad thing. But he says the emphasis not, doesn't need to be necessarily on the outside, but where the em emphasis of a Christ follower needs to be is on the inside. Notice what he says. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart, with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. 
Verse 5. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves. How? By submitting to their husbands. There's something about submission here that Peter is teaching us. That God wants to, us, us to submit, submit to those that are in authority over us. Our government, our boss. And now we see a situation with the wives of the husbands. Now what's hard is, it's hard for us to get out of our mind what culture has taught us of submission. Because here's what we think and see. We see a woman in a bathrobe being abused physically, mentally, emotionally. Being told what to do, where to go, how to go. I, uh, in fact, let me, let me, let me say this. Let me, let me finish this point and I'll come back. In verse 6, it says, As Sarah obeyed Abraham, you ready? Calling him Lord. And you are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Now, right there when you come to this verse, <coughs> Sarah called Abraham Lord. You say, you know what, there's some things I want to call my husband, but Lord is not one of them. <laughs> and I've had many women say, Eddie, I want to follow Christ, but every time it comes to this point... Everything in me shudders. And it's like it stops me from really growing in my walk because this act of submission has been so abused in my life. Notice Genesis, ladies. Chapter 21, verse 12. God says, Abraham, listen to your wife. There's a situation going on. Abraham doesn't know what to do. God says, Abraham, listen to Sarah. Do what she tells you to do. It's a good thing. Now, here at the end of verse 6, he points out, do not fear anything that is frightening. Do not fear anything that is frightening. I've been working now with families for a while, almost 25 years. And I can't tell you the struggle that I have. The fleshly struggle that I have. When a woman walks into my office with a black eye, broken arm, broken ribs. Because my thought is not that of compassion. My thought of is revenge and let me do you what you did to her. Is my thought. What sickens it even more? Men have done this in the name of God. So what we see here now, that in our society, when we hear submission, we recoil. When we hear submission, we look at God and we go, wow, you must not be as loving as I thought you were, because if you want me to do this, this is not making sense. But again, as Peter is teaching, he says, as the kingdom moves, as people come to Christ, there's going to be situations where one of the spouses will be a Christ follower and one of them will not. In fact, Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 51, He says, Do you think that I have not come to give peace on earth? No, Jesus said. I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. Jesus said, When I come, I will bring division. Because there will be those that will follow me, there will be those that do not follow me. <coughs> and so then the question is, Peter says, what then, wives, do you do? Wives, what do you do when you are a follower devoted to Christ, but your husband isn't? Do you divorce him? Do you follow in his ways? What do you do? Take out your notes today, and let's get started. Let me tell you what submission is not. As Peter starts off, though, he says, and there's a purpose. Peter starts off, to women that are married to non-promise keepers. Be submissive to your own husbands. And then he repeats the admonition in verse 5. For in this way, in former times, the holy women who hoped in God. Ladies, I'm going to ask that you will underline that verse. These ladies who their hope was not in their husband, not in their marriage. Their hope was in God. Used to adorn themselves. Being submissive to their own husbands. I need a volunteer. Can I use it to be with you? 
Right, this is it. Can I, can I, can I, can I use you guys? You guys are new back, so I'm just going to use you. You don't have to get up. In fact, you might, you might enjoy this, okay? Uh, Suzanne, I need you to stand for me, okay? I need everybody to look, every woman to look at Suzanne because she's my example today. Come stand on the chairs for them too. <laughs> We're family, so we can do it. Suzanne, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm not going to ask you to divorce Brian. I'm not going to ask you to get rid of your kids. But I'm going to ask you just for the next probably 20 minutes to pull yourself outside of being a mother, pull yourself outside of being a wife, and you are solely a follower of Christ first. Okay? And then what we're going to do, once we establish that, then we're going to place you back into a situation understanding what submission is. Does that make sense? Because first and foremost, we're a follower. And there's going to be situations in our life that Christ is going to put us into a situation. That's why we must always keep in mind, first and foremost, follow of Christ. Okay? Now, the other servers, I made him sit in two different aisles, so I'll just make you Brian screw over one seat, okay? Just for illustration purposes, okay? So, you can be seated. You're just separated for a purpose. Now, here we go. I had a guy when I was in Florida. This guy came to my office to make a case how his wife was not being biblically submissive to him. And he went on for about 30 minutes listing stuff. And tell you, I, I, church, I'm telling you, it took everything inside of me not to throw something at this guy. Okay? Because it got to the place. And you know, you know that your pastor's trying to be more tactful, trying to be more of a pastor. I, I just can't do it. I don't know. Okay? In situations like this, I lose it. It got to the place that this lady had to ask permission to go to the restroom. This is how dominant this guy came in, in his life. So when he finished, I said, okay, you done? Yeah. And I was trying to be respectful. So let me tell you something. I said, you're one of the biggest idiots I've ever seen in my life. I said, if you understand the Bible, Jesus came to set us free, not to tell us when to go pee. And I said that. And I said, your understanding of biblical submission is so jacked up and so messed up and it is not biblical at all. This poor lady over there, she had a half smile, if you could see it. She was trying to hide it from her husband, but it was like, thank you! We're talking. Let me tell you what submission does not mean. Number one, agreeing with everything that your husband says. Now, if you'll notice in verse one here, she is a Christian, and he is not. The most profound question that the human heart will ever answer is that of following God. And we see here right off the bat, she has made a decision to follow Christ. He has not. So submission doesn't mean agreeing with everything. It can't. Because if that was the case, she could not have become a Christ follower. Number two. <coughs> submission doesn't mean leaving your brain or will at the altar. It is not the inability or the unwillingness to think for yourself. Again, here is a, war a woman who heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. She thought about it, she processed it, and she came and accepted him. Now, her husband didn't. In fact, Peter probably would have said that he was disobedient to the word. Now, Peter here is not talking about believers, ladies. The husbands who are not being obedient to the word. We'll talk about that in a second. He is talking about that when they were disobedient to the word, disobedient in coming to Christ is what he's talking about there. Number three. Submission doesn't mean avoiding every effort to change your husband. In fact, the whole point of this text is to tell a wife how to win her husband. Be submissive to your own husband so that even if any of them are dis disobedient to the word, they may be one. Now, if you don't care about biblical context, then you can say this. You know what? Submission is just, you know, whatever he's going to be, he's going to be. No, 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 no. Peter says that if you understand what submission is, it is the strategy for changing him. Submission does not say, I renounce all efforts to change my husband. What it does say is my faith and trust is in God. Now, ladies, let me ask you a question. 
Do you know what is beautiful to God? Here's what you have to understand. Suzanne, here's what you have to understand. Because Brian right now is not a believer. Okay? Good guy. But he's not a believer. Okay? Suzanne, you are not married to Brian first. You're a follower of Christ. You have been placed into this family to be a follower of Christ. Do you realize that Jesus maybe placed you in this situation to be a witness to him? Okay? Because first and foremost, I understand that I'm a follower. So then what is going to be the tactic or the or the or the strategy that God is using in our life to show himself to this person? Guess what it is? Guess what it is? Submission. Do you know what is beautiful to God? When people begin to love as He loved. Jesus Christ came to this earth. He submitted Himself to earthly authorities. He submitted Himself even to the death of the cross. What is beautiful? Submission. If we understand what He's talking about. I've always said... That in two ways, I believe you get a glimpse of what love truly is. Number one is when you have kids. When you have a child, there's something that ignites inside of you. A love that is not ending. A love that can put up with everything. And that also with marriage. That you are put into a situation to love unconditionally. Let's go on. Number four. It's in your notes. Submission does not mean putting a husband's will before Christ's will. Again, I have to stress this. The text clearly teaches that the wife is a follower of Christ before and above being a follower of her husband. He's going down the path of unbelief. She is going down the path of belief. In fact, submission puts these relationships into a proper perspective. The relationship to our government the relationship to our boss, the relationships to our family. In fact, when Sarah called Abraham Lord, it was not the capital L. It was lowercase L. It was respect, as we're going to talk about in a second. It was the respect for the responsibility that Abraham had been given by God Almighty. Sarah was submitting herself, or in respect of her husband, and the encouragement of her husband of the authority that God has placed in their life. Here's the next one. Submission is not getting personal and spiritual strength from your husband. Ladies, here is one area that I feel like you've tripped up in. I've heard this for years. If my husband was more of a spiritual leader, we would... I've seen women with their growth in Christ stunted... Blaming him. If my husband was, my husband would, he's supposed to be. I think we see clearly in this text that this hope of this woman was not in her husband. This hope was in Christ. You see, she is summoned to develop depth and strength and character. Not for her husband. Excuse me, not from her husband. Verse 5 says that her hope is in God, not in her husband. Last one, number 6. Submission is not acting out of fear. Ladies, Christ has made us free. And I've had more women say, why in the world would God design something so horrible as marriage if He truly loves us? My life is fearful to go to sleep. I'm fearful to wake up. All in the name of God. That is not submission. So then the question is what? Then what is submission? Brian or Suzanne, I'm going to ask you now to move back into your marriage as a follower of Christ and now take this act with the understanding of the kingdom, with the understanding of eternity. Let me also stop right here and say, and I'll say this in a little bit with, uh, at the end of the service. That's why in this community, what I would love to develop more than anything else is when our young people are growing up 
And they talk about getting married. Some of you have heard, my premarital counseling is brutal. In fact, I tell you right off the bat, I'm going to do everything I can to keep you from getting married. But you know what I'd love to do? I would love to put a council together. When our young women are coming up, have four other women to sit them down and tell them how, mar how beautiful marriage can be, but what marriage truly is. I told you about a year ago, sort of in three years, that in two years, of all the people that I, I had done marriage counseling with, only two couples said that they were getting married because of love. You see, the problem is, is we walk into this holy institution. We get two or three years into it, like, man, I don't like this anymore. I'm done with it. Our culture has taught us an unholy you. So what is submission? I've got four different definitions. They're not my own, except for the last one. But notice, these are in your notes. Number one, submission is the divine calling of a wife to honor and affirm her husband's leadership. Now, I've changed the word leadership because I think this is a more proper word to responsibility. Submission is a divine calling of a wife to honor and affirm her husband's responsibility that God has placed in his life and help carry it through according to her gifts or the way God has gifted her. Number two. It is the disposition to follow a husband's authority and an inclination to yield to his leadership. Third, it is an attitude that says, I delight for you to take the initiative in our family. And I am glad when you take responsible for things and lead with, say it with me, what? Love. love. In church, what is love? Huh? God. God. Love is not an emotion. There is not a woman on the face of the earth that would not love to be led with a man who is displaying the very nature and character of God. I've talked to some of the most, if you want to call them liberal women, women's rights. But when they settle down and we're just talking just straight, I have yet to meet the woman it says, you know what, I would, not, I would love more than anything to have a man in my life to love me, to care for me, to guide me, to help me. Why? It's the way you're designed. Here's the last one. It is the attitude, as a wife, that I have been placed in your life by God to encourage you in your God-given responsibility. Now, there is a great clip that teaches what I believe to be biblical submission. And it's in Rocky Free. Okay? I want you to watch this clip. And if you want to see what biblical submission is, here it is. Watch this. You? I want to ask you something important and I want you to tell me the truth. What? Why'd you come here? I just don't want it no more. It's over because you want it to be over. I'm glad. I do. It's just, you've never quit anything since I've known you. you want me to say? I mean, how, what, what happened? How did everything that was so good get so bad? Get so bad? Tell me what? I wrecked everything by not thinking for myself. I mean, why couldn't Mickey tell me where I was really at right from the start? He didn't have to carry me and lie to me and make me think I was better than I really was when I wasn't. He never lied. Those fights weren't right. They weren't, Adrian. I never fought anybody who was all in the prime. I was always some angle to hold on to the title longer than I should have had it. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying here? I understand, but you've got to understand that he loved you, and that was his job, protecting you. Look, that protecting don't help nothing. It only makes things worse. You, you wake up after a few years thinking you're a winner, but you're not. You're really a loser. And so we wouldn't have had the title as long. So what? At least it would have been real, Adrian. It was real. Nothing is real if you don't believe in who you are. 
I don't believe in myself no more. Don't you understand? What if I don't believe? That's it. He's finished. It's over. That's it. That's not it. That is it. Why don't you tell me the truth? What are you putting me through, Adrian? You want to know the truth? The truth is I don't want to lose what I got. In the beginning, I didn't care about what happened to me. I go in the ring, I get busted up. I didn't care. But now there's you, there's a kid. I don't want to lose what I got. What do we have that can't be replaced? What? A house. We got cars. We got money. We got everything but the truth. What's that truth? I'm afraid, all right? You want to hear me say it? You want to break me down? All right, I'm afraid. For the first time in my life, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, too. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. There is. For me, there is. Why, you're human, aren't you? Look, I don't know what I am. All I know is I'm a liar. And because of that, Mickey ain't here no more. You didn't push him into anything. He was a grown man, and he did what he had to do. And you have no right to feel guilty for what happened. You don't. You were a champion, and you did what you were expected to do. And you did what I and everybody else thought you should do. And you want to tell me that those fights weren't real, that you were carried? Well, I don't believe it. It doesn't matter what I believe, because you're the one that's got to carry that fear around inside you. Afraid that everybody's going to take things away. Afraid you're going to be remembered as a coward. That you're not a man anymore. Well, none of it's true. But it doesn't matter if I tell you. It doesn't matter because you're the one that's got to settle it. Get rid of it. Because when all the smoke is cleared and everyone's through chanting your name, it's just going to be us. And you can't live like this. We can't live like this. This is gonna bother you for the rest of your life. Look what it's doing to you now. Paula thinks you can do it. So do I. But you, you gotta wanna do it for the right reasons. Not for the guilt over Mickey. Not for the people. Not for the title. Not for money or me. But for you. Just you. Just you alone. If I lose, then you lose. But at least you lose with no excuses, no fear. And I know you can live with that. How'd you get so tough? I, I live with a fighter. themselves, demanding their rights, what they want. In this last one, you saw a strong woman, but you saw her defending, encouraging a man. And I tell you what, ladies, let me tell you, we have big time insecurities. Suzanne, Brian's insecure about his leadership, is providing for your family if he's good enough just like every other man in this room and there is a mechanism that God has put together called a woman that encourages a man like nothing else on this planet so here is a woman that is married to a man who is not a believer what does she do but now to kiss his feet she becomes the most amazing encouragement in his life. That's what biblical submission is. You see, in the first one, they were name called. In the second one, they were strong, passionate, 
encouragement. I know you can. I know you can. I believe in you. Ladies, you have no idea how much these strong, cocky, arrogant creatures that God made need you. And the truth is that sometimes that role that you play is so God-ordained that you have no clue. One of the greatest stories, and I say this in the first service, one of the greatest stories I ever heard of this, my dad was pastoring a church in Ohio, and uh, he would talk to this guy about once a year, and he would always say the same thing. He goes, you know what, I'll never be a Christian. There's too many hypocrites. Christians are all hypocrites. That was always his little thing that he would always throw out there. But the thing about it is, his wife played the piano there at the church where my dad was a pastor. And this lady was a godly woman. And my dad was praying for him one day and God really brought it to his mind. And the next thing he brought that up, he goes, you know what? The only reason why I never become a Christian is because everybody's a hypocrite. He called his wife's name. He goes, what about her? My dad said the guy literally dropped her in the seat. He literally dropped to his in the seat. And he goes, you're right. She's the one I live with every day. That and that alone. That man became a follower of Christ because of the testimony of his life. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. He's not talking about being a pushover. Believe it or not, if you know the movie Rocky, <laughs> Adrian would be that woman. She's not loud. She's not abrasive. Not always pushing her away. But you know what she does? She backs her man a thousand percent. What it says, which in God's sight is very precious. You see, ladies, and, and Suzanne, that's why I took you out. Do you want your life to be precious in the sight of God? Ladies, do we follow? See, if I'm a Christ follower first, that's where my allegiance lies. If it's about my way and my doing things, then I'm going to go, well, my husband's not doing this and he needs to do this. No, 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 no. As a Christ follower first, and then we're placed in that situation, it's very precious in the sight of God. Verse 5, for this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adore themselves. How? How? By being the best cheerleader, that guy. Be the best cheerleader that God placed that guy in my life. That's what submission is. That you realize in your mind, in your life, that God has given him a responsibility. And you are his greatest cheerleader towards that. Now Paul here, or Peter, takes a turn. I gotta wrap it up here. Peter here takes a turn. He says, likewise, husbands. Live with your wives. It's funny here because he goes with the same thought that Paul does in Colossians 4. When Paul says, Masters, treat your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Peter says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Now, this frustrated me because Peter really doesn't explain what this means. This used to frustrate my father because he grew up on the farm and he goes, man, there were women much stronger than I ever was, so I know he's not talking about strength. So then what is he talking about? What is that weaker vessel? Well, I know this. Men and women are wired different. Men usually think black and white. Women think emotionally. That's why you can ask a man how his day was and he said, fine, that's all we need. You ask a woman how her day was, you better have about 20 minutes to listen. <laughs> There's a woman who started today. When I woke up in the morning, I was laying there in bed. I thought about these yellow shoes. These yellow shoes, I went to the closet. I found so I called my friend. She said, I found the yellow shoes. And so I was like, oh. Okay? Now, for a woman, you're thinking, and? We're wired different. Now watch. That's why for a woman, she will take it and 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 take it. Because she will emotionally reason it out. He didn't mean it. He was just having a bad day. And she will take it and take it and take it. And men will abuse that and abuse that and abuse that and abuse that. He says, 
Husbands, as the responsible party, live with your wives in this understanding way that you are showing honor. I also think it means to that area of responsibility that you don't abuse the responsibility that God's given you. But then look what he does. Then he puts them on the same plane. As the weaker vessel sits, they are heirs with you with the grace of life. In God's eyes, buddy, we're all on the same page. Here on earth, God has given us levels of responsibility. And then those when he says, Men, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Guys, how do we love our wives? Notice Ephesians 5.22. Husbands, love your wife. How? As Christ loved the church. And gave himself for it. You see, Peter here gets into the men. That there is this understanding that if you now, because he switches from a wife with an unsaved husband, now to a husband who is saved and the wife is saved. Both believers. So Peter here knows that there is potential abuse or abuse going on. He says, guys, I'll tell you something. As this responsible party, you honor her. You honor her. You guys are joint heirs. And if you truly are a follower of Christ, God's not going to give you the time of day you abuse that woman. If you don't honor her, respect her, and love her, how? As Christ loved the church, he gave his Ladies, you can agree or disagree. I, I, I hope you don't jump up and cheer, but here it is. Any woman would love and cherish true biblical submission. Because biblical su submission is not this. Biblical submission is actually this. Being nurtured and cherished. And cared for. Here's my last part. I'm done. Women of valor, what do we do? Women that are in a situation where maybe they're good men, they're just not believers. What do we do? You become his greatest cheerleader. Not in sin, but in his goals. When he's discouraged, you encourage. When he's fearful, you tell him he can. But your hope is in God. But I'm going to ask us as a Christian community, ladies, when you know other women are in these situations, make them your best friend. Make them your prayer partner. You encourage your sister. You love your sister. Guys, what do we do? We're putting together an activities team that we can have opportunities where we can make connections with people that maybe are not followers of Christ. They're not going to come to church, but they might go play golf, they might go jet skiing, they might go rock climbing. And men, we befriend that man. Not to pound in Christ in him, but to show him Christ. To love him. To care for him. Because as we've said so many times, we're all on that same journey. Submission is simply being obedient to God. Ladies, if you're in a situation, and hear me, I'm done. The beauty of the body of Christ is this. Ladies, if you're in a situation and your husband claims to be a follower, here's what you tell him. If you're truly a follower of Christ and what you're doing to me you think is right, let's go talk to the pastor and see if that's true. It's called accountability. Ladies, because if you're in a situation that is not biblical and he claims to follow Christ, that's the beauty of accountability. Because if I'm truly a follower, my wife is going to feel lifted, is going to feel loved, is going to feel cared for. What about if he's not a follower? Then that's where we pray for him, that's where we love him, that's where we encourage him. But ladies, are we no way, form, or fashion saying that you stay in an abusive relationship? If you're being mentally or physically abused, your children are being abused, you fear for your life, that's not what we're talking about. Submission is simply being in that situation. 
and you're devoting yourself to that person's life. As a community, that's why we need to care for each other. As a community, we need to be there for each other. Because we have women sitting in this room right now to have no idea what they're going through. Ladies, last thing we're done. If you do have a bottom keeper in your life, if you have a man who loves God, who follows God, who serves God, who cares for you, who takes care of you, be thankful. And keep it going. Become a better cheerleader. But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to beg you with everything inside of me, please hear me. If you've heard something else, hear this. We have young people that are being raised in a culture that have no clue about love. Invest yourself in young ladies. Do you do that? Do you think about it? Do you pray about it? That's it. Father, we love you. Father, this is a tough subject. Father, I pray today that you would do what only you can do. The Father, we can't understand biblical submission because of how our culture has so tainted it. So Father, we need your spirit, your word to guide us, to lead us, to unlock, to open what spiritual, biblical submission truly is. Father, I can just see it, how it enriches our homes. It enriches our women. It enriches our men. It enriches our children. Father, we have taken this word and it's been tagged on so many horrible crimes. So, Father, help us today to see it from your word. And Father, as we have cried for years that we would come under your authority. So, Father, our prayer is you would lead us, you guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me encourage you. After the service, if you would like to talk, questions, I'd love to. Emails, text. Our praise team, I'm going to ask you to stand together. Our praise team is going to lead us out today. But as we have committed ourselves to love, to learn, to lead, and to live, we are in our learn stage right now. This is a tough thing to learn, is it not? I'm going to ask you to take this home this week and commit it to prayer. Father, teach me what it means to submit. Stand together with me today. And our praise team again is going to lead us out. If you're visiting for the first time, Brad and I would love to meet you right over here. We have a special gift for all of our first time visitors. Again, I pray that you have an amazing week. If you're visiting, it's always an honor for us to have guests. We usually don't have this heavy of topics, just where we are. We love you. God bless you. We pray that you have an amazing week.